Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at another PLC programming example and this one involves a reject station. Now a lot of the times um, we need to look at things that happened in the past and in order to do that just like this uh, station here we sense product coming along the conveyor belt and then later on we have a what well, we have a blow off here or a reject or it could be a fix or a redirect something that has to happen in the future so we have to track along these uh, packages as they move along the conveyor belt now you'll see we have a, a start a stop and a reset button we have this air blow off reject uh, station we have a sensor a and a sensor b which sense or senses the product and we have a motor here when turned on we'll drive this encoder which gives us a pulse train output so that means that a certain distance along here represents a certain distance uh, that these packages will be traveling along the conveyor belt and what we're going to be using today is a shift register and basically what a shift register will do is actually put a one or a zero on the input of that shift register then there's a clock bit um, input which comes from an encoder um, so that's just telling it when to shift it over and that's all a shift register will do and so what we'll do is we'll pick up around here where the reject is to activate our actual output so we're going to use the five um, steps to program development to do this and so I've just explained what the sequence of operation is or our tasks that we have to do and the next part we have to look at is define the inputs and outputs. So we do that. Um, we look at our PLC uh, uh, program itself. We can look at the documentation. And um, we can uh, put those in. Now, and then the next part, and once we have the um, documentation of what the inputs and outputs will be, is to look at actually the sequence table. Now the sequence table, let's close this down here, sequence table will look something like this. So I have my start, my stop, and remember my stop is a normally closed input. We have a reset, we have conveyor pulses coming from that um, encoder that's attached to the motor. We have sensor A, sensor B, and then we have a track bit for A and B. And this is my output. So there's basically two, only two outputs. There's a motor, and there's an air blow off. So let's look at the first. Basically, we have to get this motor going. So we don't have a, uh, we have the start button and we don't have the stop, which would then start the conveyor belt. And then to stop the conveyor belt, we can hit the reset or we can hit the stop button. And so basically, that's self contained. That's all that will do. So that's like a start stop circuit. The next part of this uh, sequence table is we have the air blow off. So what we do is we look for the track bit through our shift register um, and then that will turn on our air blow off. Now looking back at the the actual uh, uh, conveyor belt that we have you will notice that the in order to have a tracking in their shift register we have to have sensor A and sensor B so we have to look for that. The other thing when we look at and look at the sequence table we have to determine what happens when power goes off and in this case here we want the bits in the register to stay the same so we're going to use memory tensive area for those um, and then when we get to the air blow off it's going to blow that uh, package off all right, when the power goes off and then it gets returned again and start. So next up, we'll take a look at the actual program itself. And basically, there's three parts to this program. The first part is the start-stop. Right. So here, um, we're currently monitoring the program. And it's actually running so let's uh, we can pull up the simulator and we can stop it but that's basically we have a start and stop push button we also have that reset push button as we said that will actually reset that whole unit then we have our shift register our shift register uh, starts at v00 
and goes to V0, V10, 15. So there's 176 bits in those locations. And our first line, we have to have sensor A and sensor B in order to present, to, in order to fire it off. And then we have our encoder input. And what we're doing is just using a 100 millisecond timer to uh, do, do our sample here so we can see the bits tracking. And then our reset goes into a reset of our shift register and it just resets that signal. Lastly, we pick up, I just picked up the last bit of our shift register, which is the uh, memory, loca memory location V10 bit 15 and it activates by blow off. And over on the side here, we can see our data. So we should be able to see the data shifting through all these registers until the final end. So we'll call up the simulator. And here's my simulator here. And what I'll do is, let's just stop it for now. All right. So our conveyor belt stopped. We can start the conveyor belt. you see how that latches on. Then our um, encoder is on we have um, our sensor part sensor a and part sensor b now as soon as a comes on we'll start putting ones into the shift register and i'll turn it back off again here you can see the bits actually shifting through all through my shift register tracking it until i get finally to my output which is right here. So as soon as it hits that, that 15, it'll start turning on. You'll notice that it was turned on for as long as that, that uh, sensor was present at the start. And in this particular case, it doesn't really matter um, how long. So I can make a long one, I can make a short one, and you can see the bits will still track through the shift register here. So if we look at, and what we'll do is test that program out using our five-step uh, methodology uh, for program development. And what we can do is look at actually what actually happens here. So here's a, a animated GIF. And you can see here, there's a stop, there's a reset. And as it starts, we look for sensor A and B, and then it tracks it along until it gets to the blow off station, which then, Close it off, so then we stop, start, reset. So hopefully that explains the use of a shift register. And for more information, you can visit our website at www.accautomation.ca. Thanks for listening.